Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from the Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a new keyboard from a company that we've taken a look at a keyboard from them before. Back close to a year ago now, Kizzy, they came out with the K75 Pro, the 75% uh, free mode keyboard that also has a USB hub as well as a screen to show the battery percentage. It's a pretty nice 75%. Um, they actually sent me two of them out the first time. Ended up giving one of those away, the blue one. I actually liked that one better, but I gave them the choice, so <laughs> they got to pick. But not too long ago, they sent me an email and they said, hey, we've released a new keyboard. We'd love for you to take a look at it. I was like, sure, send it on out. So the keyboard they sent me out is the K75 Lite. Now, I believe that this is still a three mode keyboard. Um, and I think it just dispenses of the hub and of the screen, I think. But I'm interested to see. Um, I had a lot of feedback about the K75 Pro. I did intend to come back to it to mod it, and I just haven't had a chance to come around to it. But we'll go ahead and take a look at this one, see what the differences are, and see if this is better, if it's an updated version, even though it's light and just has some features that maybe you know they got rid of because people weren't looking for i mean i know that i personally if i have a usb hub i use it some people are like what no it's more than one port i'll get confused and i plug it into the wrong one it doesn't work so i don't know but let's go ahead and check it out before we start let's go ahead and see what we've got in the box so in the box we first have a very nice full size a poster basically that has a very good, um, easy to read. So that is a pretty complete manual. Also does show us that it has a 12 month warranty guarantee. Um, I know a few people that have bought this keyboard, but I can't, I can't recall one person ever telling me that they had issues with this keyboard. So, I mean, I, I guess that probably speaks for itself. And when I say this keyboard, I mean the previous one, the K75 Pro. Um, I do know a couple people personally that bought it because they liked it as well, and they still use it, but I do see it on their desk. So we also have a switch and keycap for a standard USB-A to USB-C cable and some extra switches. And I do recall on the previous one, which I hope I'll remember, I'll put a link below um, to the review for the K75 Pros, but uh, this is a linear switch one of them had tactile switches and I actually ended up getting some of their tactile switches because I really like them. Now this is a, oh, this is a Jersey switch. So it's a linear, it's a cream, medium weight, 45, 50 grams perhaps. And looks to be just barely long pull. That's five pin, has a nice SMD window. Nice sharp bottom out. But thankfully, they include some extra switches. Four extra switches are really nice for 75%. And here we are with the Kizzy K75 Lite. As we see, it's very similar to the original one. Like I said, uh, we've replaced the screen with just a badge, and we no longer have the extra ports there. We still have the pocket at the bottom for the 2.4 uh, gigahertz dongle. I have not lost mine. And I know I've I've moved around when I was using it, and um, even when I unpacked it. So that magnet on there is pretty good. Um, it seems to take a lot to make it fall. Um, it, one of the first things I noticed, I do believe the original one was in an OEM profile. This looks to be, I'd say, either an MOA or an MDA keycap profile. It's very sculpted. Uh, but it's actually quite nice. Well, it's definitely been upgraded with the hi-fi layer. At least that's my guess, because it definitely sounds like it. So taking a look at the stabilizers. They are well attached to the plate. Just the slightest bit of wiggle. They do appear to be lubricated, and they don't appear to be overly lubricated, which is always nice. 
Oh, looks like they have just enough. Very nice. So we can see that, yep, above the PCB, we have a PET layer. And above that, we have what feels like an IXPE foam. We have south facing, three and five pin. Does not appear though that we have the capability for PCB mounted stabilizers. We do have a PC plate. And we have a layer of what feels like, I would guess, probably silicone between the plate and the PCB. Despite them being plate mounted stabilizers, I think they actually sound pretty good. Yeah, this one, they definitely improved on the feel and the sound of it. It feels a bit flexier. And adding those layers, the hi-fi layers, it sounds so much better stock. The other one sounds pretty good, but it did not. This was before hi-fi layers started taking over. And that combination of the PET and the IXPE became the standard. But it's that very nice crunchy marbly glassy creamy there's so many adjectives for it i just call it hi-fi it's got a pop at the end of it which is really nice so it, it is a nice looking keyboard um i personally i i'm loving the legends it's very retro to me these colors the blue the purple pink legends on the purple keys um the white it's just it all works the legends are nice and big, which I prefer. Um, I actually like, I'm pretty sure this is MDA, not MOA, because MOA is, is not sculpted in this one. Is, so it's most likely MDA. Um, and it has a uh, just a very nice feel to it. They definitely improved on the sound. I'll say that for sure. So it looks like, because I remember that this one for the K75 Pro, was priced a little bit higher this one i think i, I want to say it's 80 or 90 dollars but the other one was like 150 or 160 dollars which i think was one of my complaints if i can remember correctly that it was priced a little bit too high i think this one i mean i know right now the we're seeing a renaissance so this is actually kind of north of what I would say a plastic three mode would go for, but it is well built. It does sound nice and it does have a guarantee. And like I said, I haven't heard of a single complaint um, from the people I know. Um, usually if there's a problem with the keyboard, especially if there's one that I review, I'll get enough comments. I'll get emails. I'll get PMs. I'll get messages through all the different platforms. People let they make sure to let me know um you know a lot of times i do my best to pass that on you know especially if i can replicate um whatever issue they're having unless it's like you know just an issue with their own unit but i can say that this is with the keycaps with the switches with the extra switches i wish they probably would have been nice to include a couple extra keycaps but i think the majority of people that use 75 percent are used to this layout or something similar enough to it, uh, I would put the end down here and the page up, page down in the middle, but that's just me. Delete, and I do believe the software gives us the ability to um, reprogram. I know there's per key RGB, but I do believe there are function layers, but we'll have to take a look at that. Just the specs. Today we are taking a look at the KZK75 Lite, a three mode 82 key. 75% hot swappable keyboard. It is available in six different colors and different keycap profiles. It has a top gasket mounted flex cut PC plate, a three and five pin hot swap south facing flex cut PCB. The model we are reviewing today is preloaded with MDA double shot PVT keycaps and Jersey Rain linear switches. This keyboard comes weighing in at 824 grams and has a battery capacity of 3,750 milliamp hours. 
function of this keyboard sits at 17 and a half millimeters off the typing surface, while the back sits at 29 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of seven degrees. Flipping out the first set of fold-out feet will take the back up to 33 millimeters, changing the angle of typing to nine degrees. Folding down the last set of fold-out feet will take the back up to 37 millimeters and provide a typing angle of 11 degrees. This keyboard MSRPs for $89.99, though there are multiple discounts available. Links below.